Well, welcome everybody to a lesson on related rates. I tell you what, roll up those sleeves and tighten those bootstraps because we're going to tackle one of the most challenging topics in all of calculus. Um, so we're going to work through them together. We're going to turn this into a two-day lesson. So this is our first video of two. And uh, we're going to introduce some key concepts today. And then we're going to go over four individual problems that uh, each contain... Uh, special characteristics that we may see on the AP exam. So uh, I've identified four keys that I think we need to emphasize in order to be successful on the AP exam. Number one, let's get in the habit of drawing a diagram, especially early on until you get to that uh, level where you really consider yourself an expert. So, But the expectation here early on in the year is that we'll see diagrams for every single one. Then I want you to list, um, list the given as well as what you are trying to find, whether you know they're asking for DRDT or DVDT or something like that, using appropriate calculus notation. All right, um, and and I'll certainly try to model that the best I can as we go through these four examples. Let's see. Number three, I want you to pick an equation that relates the variables in play, and then we'll differentiate. And let's put a little asterisk in there. We're going to differentiate with respect to t. Okay, that's a given. And uh, probably the most important thing that I want to stress is that uh, we do not substitute any values for the variables until after we differentiate. Okay, so like if they said, uh, you know, r equals 3, we're certainly, we're not going to substitute that 3 in for r until after we've taken the derivative and cleaned up that derivative and so forth. So let's really emphasize step number 4 there. So our first problem here has a, a few bear traps in it, but they said the volume of a cube is decreasing at a rate of 10 um, meters cubed per hour. So I'm just going to write down dv dt. Um, I knew that it was dv dt because of the word rate and the fact that the units you know, were, you know, per hour. And so I'm going to say now it was also decreasing. So I'm going to throw in negative 10 meters cubed per hour. Okay. Um, they want to know how fast is the total surface area decreasing. So I'm going to say the derivative of area. I'm going to use just A for surface area. What is that at the moment when the area equals 54 meters squared? Okay. Um, anytime we're doing a related rates question, I want you to pretend it's almost like you're watching a video of this action happening. You know, kind of like watching a movie. And then at some point in the movie, we're going to hit the pause button. And in this particular one, we're going to go bam. We're going to hit the pause button precisely at the one moment when the area is 54. It's not going to always be 54. That's for darn sure. There will be one special moment in time when the area is 54. And that's when we're going to hit the pause button. And at that precise moment in time, we're going to analyze and try to figure out how fast or at what rate the area is, the surface area is changing. So, as far as my quick little diagram here, let's see, not always real strong at drawing these three-dimensional shapes, but we'll, we'll do our best here. That'll get the job done. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to let x equal the length of each side. And what you'll notice is that the volume does turn out to be x cubed. And we're going to say that the surface area, well, each face has an area of x squared, and there's a grand total of six faces, so the surface area is 6x squared. And so, oh, we got ourselves a handful here. Well, let's do this. Let's kind of work backwards almost. We eventually want to find dA dt, right? So let's differentiate with this function with respect to t. And we'll get a little power rule here with some chain rule. So we got 12x to the first times dx dt. And you'll notice, what are we missing here? I don't know what the length of x is at this precise moment. And I don't know at what rate x is changing at this moment. So I'm going to have to use some of this other given information to figure that out. Now what we can do here is we can say, well, we paused it at the moment when the area is 54. So let's see, if the area was 54, that would mean that at that same moment, each side had a length of 3. So I'm going to say, let's substitute a 3 in for x. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and I'm going to differentiate the volume formula. And what this is going to do, this is going to allow me to figure out what the dx dt is. And so we could say, well, dv dt is negative 10. We just figured out that each side has a length of 3. And then we could solve for dx dt. And I got negative 10 over 27 is my dx dt. That's the rate at which each side's changing. So I'm going to substitute that over here. And ladies and gentlemen, from that point forward, we're just going to do a little bit of arithmetic. 
And we're going to say that the area is changing at a rate of, let's see, I'm going to simplify. I'm going to say 3 goes into 27 three times. Oops, I'm sorry, 9, 9. Um, then I can simplify the 12 and the 9. I'll say, let's see, 3 goes into there 4, 3 goes into there 3, and multiply the 4 and the negative 10. So I've got negative 40 divided by 3. Now I need units, so I'm describing area with respect to time. So area would be meters squared, and time in this particular case would be, let's see, was it? I already forgot, i got to scroll up here. Hours, wow. Okay, good thing I checked. I would have guessed like minutes or something. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, that's my answer. And you kind of see there was like a lot of action on the sidelines, so to speak, to try to figure out what the value of x and dx dt were so that we could figure out what da dt was. All right, we've just got a very nice, well-behaved rectangle here. But what's interesting about this rectangle is that the length is decreasing at a rate of 2 centimeters per second, while the width is increasing at a rate of 2 centimeters per second. So that's kind of exciting. So I'm going to say that dl dt is equal to negative 2 centimeters per second. And dw dt is equal to positive 2 centimeters per second. So that's kind of interesting. Now at the moment when the length is 12 and the width is 5, that's the moment where we're going to hit that pause button and freeze it. And we're going to analyze that one instant in time. So, so we kind of get our nice diagram here. And what I've got is I'm going to call this my width and I'm going to call this my length. And the first thing they want us to do is they want to find the rate at which the area is changing. So we've got a three-part problem. And we'll tackle area. Let's say the area is, you know, length times width. And both L and W are variables. They're both changing. Unfortunately, neither one are constants. We'll see some problems later on where they, there are some constants involved in the problem. And we're going to find out why those are our absolute best friends. But unfortunately, nobody's a constant here. Length is changing. Width is changing. And therefore, of course, area is changing. So let's differentiate with respect to time. And we're going to have to use the product rule for sure because length times time. So I'm going with the first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. And now we'll just substitute in all the appropriate values. So I've got a 12 times a positive 2. And just be careful. Make sure we don't make any careless mistakes substituting here. Make sure we got the negative on that last 2. And 24 minus 10 is going to give me 14. Let's see here. So that's going to be 14 what? Well, we are describing area, so we're going to go with centimeters squared. Area is always going to be a unit squared per second. So that's our first part. Now we're going to try to tackle perimeter. This is probably the easiest one of the three. The perimeter is simply 2w plus 2l, or of course you could say 2l plus 2w. Differentiate with respect to time. No product rule, no, no nothing real fancy. We're going to say the derivative of the first term is 2 times dw dt plus 2 times dl dt. And by the time I substitute, this is a rather unusual, I'm going to get, let's see, I think that's going to be positive 4 and negative 4. Add them together, I got 0. 0 centimeters per second. And it kind of makes sense, you know, um, the one side's increasing at the same level. A rate that the other one's decreasing, so they kind of balance each other out, and therefore the perimeter, the total cumulative perimeter, remains the same. All right, our part C here says we are going to find the rate at which the length of this diagonal is changing. And so, what I'm going to do is let's just call this length of the diagonal x. You know, of course, you could use any letter that you really would like to. And so, I'm going to use the Pythagorean theorem for this one, just a matter of picking the appropriate formula. And so let's say that x squared equals l squared plus w squared. Again, all three of those are variables. x is changing, l is changing, and w is changing. So we got to differentiate every single one. So let's go 2 times x times dx dt. And that's going to be 2 times l times dl dt. Hopefully you can read my handwriting here. 2 times w times dw dt. Now, here's something we could agree on right now, is that every time you differentiate the Pythagorean theorem, every term is going to have a coefficient of 2, and therefore we could just divide every term by 2. And what's going to happen is we're going to effectively kill all those coefficients. So a lot of times when you see me differentiate the Pythagorean theorem in the future, I won't even mess around with those 2s. I'll, kind of, I'll just kill them instantly. So here's uh, what is the length of x right at this moment. We're going to have to scroll up take a look. At the moment when we froze the problem, 
we said we knew that the length was 12, we knew that the width was 5. This is a Pythagorean triple, and 5, 12, 13 is a Pythagorean triple. Or you could have just done the work on the side. You could have said 5 squared plus 12 squared equals C squared, and then you could have solved for C or X, I should have said, manually. But uh, I recognize 5, 12, and 13 as a Pythagorean triple, so we are good to go. So we've got uh, that x is 13, and then dx dt is the unknown that we're solving for, the rate at which the diagonal is increasing. The length is 12, dl dt is negative 2. Let's see, the width is 5, and it's increasing at a rate of, whoops, should just put a 2 there. So let's see, what do we got here? We know that the diagonal is going to be increasing at a rate of negative 5. 24 plus 10 is negative 14, divide by that 13, and the x is measured in centimeters only, and t is measured in seconds. Now certainly as we run through these problems, we've got two done, two to go. Uh, anytime you need to go go back and rewatch it, don't be afraid to exercise that little bit of self-discipline, and uh, the little extra effort you put in tonight will have great uh, benefits tomorrow in class for sure. What we've got here is I'm envisioning the stadium and we'll say here's my stadium for lack of a better drawing and Clark is going to shoot straight south at a rate of four miles per hour and Lena is going to shoot straight west at a rate of three miles per hour and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that uh, capital C represents the length of that side and capital L represents the length of that side and then we have this imaginary hypotenuse and again I'm going to call that X uh, for lack of a better idea, but uh, let's say the rate at which DC, DT is changing is going to be the 4 miles per hour, and then we'll say the rate at which L is changing is simply 3 miles per hour. And just a little itty bitty bear trap on this one, they said, well, how fast is the distance between Clark and Lena changing? So they're ultimately asking me for what is DX, DT. Um, at the moment, after they've been traveling for 10 hours now, so a little bit of a bear trap, usually they would say, you know, at the moment when L is this distance, or at the moment when C is this distance, but this time they just snuck in a T value. So what you got to do is you got to say, well, if they've been running for 10 hours, and so you could agree with me that this is maybe a slightly impractical problem, but nonetheless it's good practice calculus-wise. Um, if they've been going for 10 hours, the length of L is now going to be 30 miles long because she's been going 3 miles per hour for a grand total of 30 miles. And then we could say that C is a length of 40 miles now after 10 hours of running at a rate of 4 miles per hour. I should have put my miles per hour right there. So I think we've got this bear ready to go. We could say that uh, x squared of course equals c squared plus l squared. We're going to differentiate. We know uh, just like we said in the last slide we can kill all the 2's so it's just going to be simply x dx dt. Again, I want to emphasize that all of the variables were, were indeed variables. None of them are constants. Unfortunately, if they were constants, that would have made our life a little easier. But of course, you know me, I wouldn't pick one that easy for you to try tonight. And so, let's see, what would the length of x be? x is the instantaneous length at this moment. Well, we've got a 30 and a 40, and hopefully you recognize the 3, 4, 5 Pythagorean triple. So this is a length of 50. And so we've got 50 times dx dt equals, let's see, C has a length of 40, increasing at a rate of 4. L's got a length of 30, increasing at a rate of 3. And I'll just do a little bit of multiplying here. We'll finish this bear right up. So let's see, dx dt is going to be, let's see, that's 160, that's 90. Add them together, that's 250, divided by 50, that's going to give us 5. And x is measured in miles and the T's measured in hours, so again, 5 miles per hour is the rate at which the imaginary diagonal is increasing. All right, we're going to talk about one of my favorite types of problems when you talk about related rates, and we're going to introduce you to a right circular cylinder, and uh, you perhaps remember from last year that there are some very special characteristics of these types of problems. And so we basically picture kind of like a water cup almost, and uh, we've got water pouring into the cup, and so if the water's pouring in, the volume is increasing, and they said that it's uh, pouring in at a rate of 1,600 cubic feet per minute. So dV dt right there is my 1,600 cubic feet per minute. All right, and they said, well, hey, if the altitude, or I just say height, if the height is 10, and at that same moment the radius is 5, can you find the rate at which the radius is changing? So we want to find dr dt 
at the precise moment when the height is equal to 7 feet. So we've got our hands full here. So the first thing I want to do is, well, the volume formula for a right circular cylinder is going to be 1 third pi times r squared times h. And what you'll notice right now is that volume is in terms of two variables, okay? And I think that's worth making a note in your notebook just to emphasize to yourself that volume is being expressed in terms of both R and H, and that's two variables. So but I'm going to go ahead, and I'm going to play, kind of play devil's advocate, and I'm going to differentiate right now. I'm going to leave the one-third pi out front because that's simply a coefficient. And then what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to use the product rule between the R squared and the H as I differentiate. So it would be like R squared dH dt plus H times 2 times R times dr dt. And what you'll notice here is there's a lot of unknowns. Um, let's see. Uh, we could substitute something for R. We could substitute something for H. But we have these two other unknowns. We don't know dHdt and we don't know drdt. And so we have too many unknowns. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to scratch that whole idea. And i got to backtrack. And what I want to do is before I get into a hurry and differentiate, I want to, and here's what I need you to write down in your notebook, we need to rewrite the volume formula so that it's in terms of only one variable. Okay, We need to rewrite it so it's in terms of only R or only H. We need to kill one of those. And what you'll notice is the relationship between the height and the radius here, they form a right triangle. And so what happens is the water fills, and those two variables are always proportionally equivalent. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of go off to the side here, and I'm going to set up a little proportion. I'm going to say, well, the radius is to height as 5 is to 10 based on the given numbers they gave us. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cross multiply. Let's see here. And in this particular case, if I want to eventually find DER, DT at the end of the problem, what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to solve this one for H. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute a 2R in for this H right here. Okay, so volume now equals one-third times pi times the R squared times the 2R that I'm substituting. And we'll just clean this up a hair. And what we're going to get, whoops, I should have said two-thirds times pi times r cubed. I now have a formula for volume that is strictly in terms of one variable only, and in this case, r. So I really haven't done any calculus yet. All I've done is I've tried to take advantage of the proportional relationship between r and h, and I've rewritten this in terms of one variable. Now I'm ready to differentiate, and I could say, well, dv dt is equal to, well, I need to do three times the two-thirds, and that just gives me two and r squared times dr dt. Don't forget about that dr dt at the end. And now we're ready to simply substitute. We know that dv dt is 1600. Little bear trap here. They didn't actually give me the instantaneous r value. They said they wanted me to pause this problem at the moment when h equals 7. So what I've got to do is I've got to say, well, if the height is 7, then that means the radius must be 7 halves, or 3.5. And that's what I'm going to substitute there. So 1600. Yeah, just a lot of number crunching from here on out. Let's see, we got 49 over 4, drdt. I could say that, uh, let's see, the 2 kills that bear, makes it a 2. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply the 2 over to the other side. And that's going to give me 49 pi drdt. And then I'm going to simply divide the 49 and the pi over all at once. And I'm going to just cut right to my final answer, and I'm going to say 3,200 divided by 49 pi, whatever that actually is. Um, and that the units would be, let's see, R is measured in feet, and I believe time was measured in minutes on this particular problem. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the rate at which your radius is increasing if the water is being poured in at a rate of 1,600 feet cubed per minute. So... Um, and we're not too worried about cleaning up that answer. Very rarely would they ask me to turn that into a decimal, and certainly if they did, we're all capable of plugging that into our calculator. So I hope you fought your way through these four problems in a very disciplined fashion. Don't be afraid to pause and rewatch as much as needed, and we will certainly challenge you tomorrow in class with some excellent, excellent related rate questions. Good luck. We'll see you tomorrow. Cylinder.